Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Weekly Crop. This week we are talking about some studio panel lights, and in particular, the G260 from LED Go, which is a full RGB studio panel light. Now in another video, we did the S150, which was just basically a tungsten to daylight, but this one's got full RGB, and so it actually makes it very comparable in a lot of ways to the RE Sky Panel S60C, which is also a fully RGB studio panel light. Now we're not gonna get into too much details about the RE Sky Panel, because a lot of those functionalities of this light are very, very well known. Um, but I wanna show you some on a basic level how these two lights compare um, and what you can expect from them. Now, this is a $7,900 light. Um, and this light here is uh, $2,300. So, um, you know, I want to show you basically sort of the value you get from this and then why you might want to step up to something like the RE Sky Panel. So, we're going to move the RE Sky Panel out of here uh, and we're going to spend most of our time talking about this light. Let's do this. So if you're not totally familiar with studio lights, uh, let me give you a quick introduction here. Studio lights aren't just relegated to the studio, they're also amazing on location and on set um, because they allow for a really robust sort of build that can be moved in and out of package trucks and in and out of buildings and things like that um, without really any or too much wear and tear to the light itself. And so they, they're great in a, a multitude of environments, but their robust design obviously requires different types of rigging and most often in case, you will actually get uh, two different types of attachments, as I mentioned, in our previous S150 video, um, you get both a junior uh, spigot here that will go inside a junior uh, receiver or your classic sort of 750 baby pin that it'll fix on. So just by removing this, you can uh, use different types of light stands for this light. Um, and then when we're looking at sort of the panel itself, um, the panel is, you know, sort of basic like this. You can get different features for it in terms of the, on the outside, just like any other uh, panel light, which is that you can get a honeycomb on it here so you can direct the light and, and sort of um, focus in the spread of the light. Um, and then you've got barn doors as well that will just go on, slide on and affix on. Um, and then when we go to the back, that's where the meat and potatoes are with lights like this. Um, and what we're really looking at here is, it's an AC power light, but you can also DC power it with uh, two V-mount batteries um, that will affix on the back here. Um, and then when we're looking at the display, um, I'll just turn it on here and uh, you've got your very standard controls when it comes to RGB lights. So you can control your colors in a bunch of different ways and the two more popular ways, or I guess really the only two ways that exist, are RGB, so red, green, blue, uh, or your HSI, which is your hue, saturation, and intensity, often also called HSL, so hue, saturation, or luminance. Uh, in this particular case, they refer to it as HSI. Um, and so we just starting off, we have our basic CCT, which is our uh, color temperature. Um, so that'll swing anywhere from, uh, let's see, let's see how low down it swings here. We go from 2700 degrees Kelvin, um, and then it will go all the way up to 7,500 degrees Kelvin, just like the S150. Um, and what's unique about this light, because it's full RGB, I can actually swing my green to magenta. So I can go, you know, you know, in one way, and then green in the other way. So really useful if you are trying to balance with um, a number of fluorescents, overhead fluorescents, which can skew either magenta or green, depending on a multitude of factors. Um, and so that's really one of the advantages with an RGB. It's not just you know creating color effects, it's that you can actually pinpoint specific colors and adjust for the place that you're in. So if you need a lot of light power, you're in a factory for example, the factory overhead lights are giving you a particular brand of color, you can match this key light or whatever other lights you have to that exact color and, and then um, white balance your camera to that and it'll look amazing. Um, so then what we can do is in the condition within the sort of tungsten to daylight, we can go into color trimming. And color trimming allows us to swing the RGB around um, to specifically match to certain environments. So it's not like your full punchy RGB, um, but it's sort of like that fine tuning of the white light, which allows you to do. Um, the, if I demonstrate here, it's, it's very subtle, so you're not gonna see a huge notice, um, but it works really, really well for what it's designed to do. Then we can go into our full RGBW. So here is where you're gonna be able to control uh, your dim of course but then I can go down I can bust down to any one of the uh, light values here and just swing the RGB around and decide you know what I want to take out and what I want to leave in um, my preference of course and I'm just gonna go to menu to access it here because it doesn't have a hot button um, but it is to go into our HSI and when we go into HSI uh, it assigns a number of, on a color wheel and so uh, in theory of course I can go down and I can adjust whatever color I want on that color wheel into a specific number. Um, and so I did notice though in my test that 
the exact numbers between this unit and the sky panel don't exactly match up. They're about maybe 10 points out of sync or 10 or 20 points out of sync. Um, and so LED Go is going to match very, very well with other LED Go or Nanguang products, but it may not match with other people's uh, HSI. So just to be aware of that, it's an easy correct. You just have to swing the dial and then the two colors look identical. Um, but just be aware that when you're trying to match different products that that may occur. Um, and then we have what's really popular with a lot of these is filter packs. It basically runs us through a, a whole series of CTB and CTO. So in, in a traditional lighting sense, when we don't have uh, RGB values, we use gels to change our color temperature of our light from you know very blue to very orange or counter the orange with some blue and that type of thing. So these are your classic sort of color packs from you know quarter, one eighth CTO, one eighth to one quarter to full CTB, et cetera, et cetera, um, which is very, very useful if you're just used to working in those environments and you just need to make those corrections. And then within that, you can choose what your base light is, whether it's a 3200 degrees Kelvin base light or a 5600 degrees Kelvin base light. Um, and then we go into um, uh, another great one, which is uh, our through our lighting mode here, we've got uh, tungsten, uh, sodium vapor, metal halide, fluorescent, and street. It looks like another sort of sodium vapor type thing. Um, so very, very, very popular. And then you can kind of swing these values around uh, as you need. It's different sort of uh, street environments. So actually buses through what looks like sodium vapor to another kind of sodium vapor and then like a mercury vapor, mercury halide, that type of thing. So a lot of different options for doing street scenes. So, you know, you can have just like, say a couple of these uh, just high up um, and uh, in an outside environment and make it look very, very believable that uh, it's being lit by the street lights um, and you can match perfectly. And if that's not enough for you, uh, like all RGB lights nowadays, uh, they have a ton of really cool features like storm, you know, you get that kind of crazy cool effect. Um, and we can go back to uh, police here, we've got our cop car and a variety of different uh, ways that we can uh, replicate those. Candlelight uh, and soft disco, hard disco. So these are just sort of like very classic uh, sort of spinning through the different HSI wheel to create sort of a nightclub effect. And in the last one here, we've got monitor, which is basically replicating a TV screen. Um, so someone's watching TV and the luminosity is going to change it sort of you know, non-specific intervals uh, to make it feel very, very believable that you're watching a television. Uh, and it's kind of very helpful that it's about the size of a television. So uh, in terms of like light spread and that, it actually makes the product a little bit more believable versus just having some little light, eye light that is just trying to produce this effect. Um, you know, the spread of this will actually be more like an actual television, which is great. Um, so I'm going to go back to CTV or uh, CCT here. Um, and then you've got your full DMX channels here. So if you're used to working with a DMX in terms of remote light control, uh, it's also fully Wi-Fi ready, just like the other lights. So whether using a LED Go app or Luminaire app with a Wi-Fi router hub, um, you can get up to 512 channels and then you can assign multiple lights on one channel. And that gives you sort of a almost unlimited amount of uh, lights and channels that you can play with and have these lights assigned to. Um, and then fully control all the functionality of these lights within those apps. Before we wrap up, I just want to talk about some quick comparables between these two lights. Now, there's really no replacement for an RE Sky Panel. If you know what the RE Sky Panel does, there's a lot of infrastructure that goes in in the back end that makes it a very useful tool uh, and almost an irreplaceable tool on very large scale productions that have to do very complicated lighting sequences uh, and very quickly. Uh, but that being said, the G260 is going to get you virtually what this guy does, 90% uh, of that. Um, and so if you're just looking for a really great RGB light that's a good studio fixture that's really robust, then this will get you most of what you need uh, if you're a smaller production, for example. Um, it does have a couple other uh, things that's worth mentioning. Uh, one is, is that the attachment points on this light um, is both baby and junior. So you have a choice of stands that you can use with this light. When we get over to the sky panel, we see a slightly different story. It is only a junior uh, spigot on there um, so that you will have to use a junior receiver stand. And the reason is, is it's a very heavy light, um, mostly because of the power pack that's on here. This power pack is removable and you can place it on the stand or wherever you want. And that does make the light a lot lighter. But I think Ari's idea here is that uh, they feel very secure that 
you can only use a junior stand um, and there's less mishaps to happen, especially when you've got the power pack on the light fixture itself. Whereas this light is still relatively light, um, so, to, so to speak. And so I very, feel very confident about putting it on a 750 spigot. Uh, and so you've got those options there. Now, in terms of light output and intensity and quality, well, the quality is gonna be virtually identical. They're 95 plus CRI on both of these lights. Um, I can't tell a difference in terms of light quality when I put on someone's face. It's indiscernible. Um, but uh, in terms of light output, we see a slightly different story. Um, with this light, you're getting at about three feet. I did a meter test. Um, and at 800 ISO, I'm getting a 5.6 at three feet. Uh, with the RE Sky panel, I'm getting uh, an F8. Uh, actually, 5.6 and a half. F8 and a half, but it's a full stop brighter either way. Um, so just be aware that this light is a full stop brighter, but again, they're vo both very, very bright lights and very, very similar. A stop difference isn't potentially that massive depending on what you're shooting. Um, and that's about it. Thanks guys so much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions about these lights, please give us a call or visit one of our stores or find us at viztech.ca. And as always, please subscribe to our channel and please comment in the comment section below. We'd love to hear what you have to say about lighting in general because this is a conversation that I love to have. And that's it for this week. Thanks so much for watching. Peace out.